Okay, so our final study in psychology is Thigpen and Cleckley, 1954, and it's a case of multiple personality, and it's one of the first documented cases of the existence of multiple personality. So what is it? Well, multiple personality um, is about more than one um, personality within a person, better known now as disassociation identity disorder. Now, the description um, of multiple personality disorder, or DID, according to the DSM and the ICD, is there is a division, a disassociation between areas of a person's conscious awareness. The person shows two or more distinct personalities. These alternative personalities are sometimes called alters. Each personality has its own way of behaving and its own memories, likes and dislikes. And they can often not understand the other personalities' likes and dislikes. The different personalities take control of the person for periods of time, and only one personality is evident at any one time. The personality is not aware of other personalities, though some may and some may not be. Um, some people notice a loss of time or blackouts when the other identity or the other identities are in control. The person can't remember important personal information, and this forgetting is not just your normal forgetfulness. They have no recollection of events occurring. Uh, it's, it's unsure that the physical effects is um, you make sure that there's no substance abuse going on, drug, uh, drug abuse, for example, or that there are no medical conditions such as epilepsy that could cause these symptoms. Okay, so the aim of Thigpen and Cleckley's research is to provide evidence from a case study of the existence of DID. The participant was a lady called, or who they call Eve White, her real name is Chris Sizemore, and she's a 25-year-old woman who is married. The sample is opportunity because uh, they were already treating her for headaches and blackouts. Um, she lived quite away from Thigpen and Cleckley, so she it was very you know, rare when they saw her. Um, but it became interesting after uh, she had amnesia for a recent shopping trip, which led to a physical abuse of her husband. Yeah, where she couldn't explain Thigpin, um, hypnotised her, and this issue was soon resolved as the memory came out. However, one of the most significant things that really triggered the interest for Thigpin and Cleckley that this wasn't just a, a normal woman of the 50s suffering from a marital breakdown was the appearance of a letter. Now, there's a bad copy in this pearl of a letter, but if you notice right at the very, very bottom of the letter, in that final paragraph, the writing changes. Not only does a writing change, but the language changes to childlike language. So it appears as it is, is Eve White has started the letter. However, it is noticeable that somebody else has finished the letter. When questioned about the letter, she's got no recollection of sending the letter. She said, I did start a letter, but I didn't finish it. I thought I threw it away. So she had a blackout and something else finished this letter and sent it to the doctors. Now, what they use um, to prove this case study is they're going to use objective and subjective interviews. And these are going to be, all in all, she had 100 hours of therapy over a 14-month period. And that's just this case study. So she was seen before as well. So as I said, they use objective and subjective um, evidence uh, to provide uh, for dis the existence of dis disassociation identity disorder. They used interviews. Now, these were psychodynamic doctors, um, so they used a lot of uh, regression into childhood type um, therapy, reflecting back. They used EEG machines to record the brain waves um, of the different personalities, <clears throat> and they used psychometric testing. Psychometric testing were things like a memory test and IQ test. Okay, so the next pearl will go into the results of Thigpen and Cleckley's study.